Welcome back to Up North at Four. It's day two of our three-day political conversations for this week, and we now welcome Senator Tammy Baldwin to the program. Senator Baldwin, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's a delight to join you. Of course. Well, let's start off by talking about the convention that's going on this week in Milwaukee, very different than previous election years, with it being entirely virtual. How do you feel it's going so far? No, I feel it's going very well. So I uh, have been to several previous Democratic National Conventions, and I can say that I am as busy during this one as I have been in previous times, minus the uh, frustration of being stuck in traffic trying to get from one venue to another. I can zoom right from one to another without any problem. Uh, so it is um, for delegates, and I, I am a delegate to the National Convention, um, there's a lot of meetings that go on outside of the two hours of televised uh, 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 convention activity. And so we're going from meeting to meeting and uh, connecting with others. And I think uh, that's probably a part of the uh, convention experience that not everybody gets to see. But as to the two hours of televised programming each day, I've found it very moving and sort of feel as though um, the stage is now so expansive that last night, for example, it went to 57 states and territories to do the roll call of the states. Um, that, was, that was quite something to behold. And we're hearing from uh, ordinary citizens from across the state and across the country uh, that might not have otherwise gotten a platform uh, at this convention. And then obviously some really powerful themes that are, uh, are, are helping us get to know Joe Biden and Dr. Jill Biden better, but also uh, I, I think creating the strongest contrast that I've ever seen between two presidential candidates. Yeah, let's talk about Joe Biden for a minute here. So yesterday marked a century since the 19th Amendment was ratified, giving all women the right to vote in this country. So 100 years later, why do you think Democratic nominee Joe Biden is the best option for women specifically? You know, I think you look back at his record of what he's prioritized um, as uh, a senator and uh, what he's prioritized uh, as Vice President of the United States. And I would add to that, since we did uh, get treated last night to you know, the second hour of the convention was really about uh, the challenges that Joe Biden has faced on a personal level that I think many, many women can relate to. But let's start with his legislative agenda. Now, he was the author of the Violence Against Women Act, and uh, he uh, crafted that uh, because he was, uh, I think, deeply moved and deeply disturbed by uh, the level of violence that is often hidden that women face. Um, and that was landmark legislation that really uh, put uh, domestic violence and uh, other uh, uh, forms of violence against women, uh, it shone a, a national spotlight on it. And the, uh, my first opportunity to work with Joe Biden was when I was a freshman member of the House of Representatives way back then. We were reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act and trying to strengthen it. and. Uh, uh, he was uh, an incredible both mentor and partner in that effort, uh, he in the Senate and me in the House of Representatives. Uh, but uh, in addition, uh, I do want to reference uh, what we learned about uh, Joe Biden and the Biden family uh, last night, if people didn't already know the story of the tragic uh, auto accident that took his wife and daughter and left his two sons uh, suffering from a huge injury uh, at the very moment he was about to be sworn into the United States Senate. Um, he uh, acted uh, the part of a single dad with two children with significant uh, health needs. And uh, that is a, a, a tragedy and a struggle that I think many can relate to. Um, 
especially his compassion and empathy, which is something that's being talked a lot more about during this election cycle, uh, because, of course, it paints such a huge contrast with our uh, current president. All right, let's turn our attention to the post office. There is a theory out there that Trump appointee Louis DeJoy is trying to, you know, sow discourse within the post office, lack confidence, in order to privatize it. In 2019, you were part of a measure saying, nope, we're not going to do that. So why do you think Louis DeJoy is taking the steps he's taking right now? Well, I want to look at it from a, a different angle. Uh, I started hearing in July from hundreds upon hundreds of constituents who were expressing concern or sharing hardship they've experienced because of delayed mail. Uh, a veteran who uh, hadn't gotten timely delivery of uh, a prescription from the VA pharmacy and it was too far away for him to be able to uh, drive to pick it up. Um, I've heard from folks who didn't get their sec social security checks on time and small businesses throughout the state who are relying uh, more on the Postal Service to get their products to their customers. And so it was clear in July something was going on, um, but there had been no public announcements and we were all uh, asking questions, asking the Postal Service um, what's happening, asking the Inspector General for the Postal Service to investigate these reports and pretty quickly we learned that this brand new Postmaster General appointed uh, uh, back in May, who by the way is a mega donor to uh, the Trump uh, campaign and Republican causes, uh, we learned uh, that he was doing um, uh, things that he said was to improve efficiency, but obviously with all the calls of concern I got, uh, it wasn't improving efficiency. And then when we started getting reports of dismantling uh, high-speed sorting equipment and uh, uh, removing uh, postal boxes, I mean, we need answers and this Postmaster General needs to be held accountable for uh, the changes that he's making uh, without uh, oversight or uh, transparency. Senator Baldwin, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for carving some time into your busy schedule for us. Thank you.